Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Laser Haas, the whistleblower in the toy industry cases. I was the court appointed CEO of eToys.com, uh, uh, and eToys and KB Toys also were acquired by Bain Capital through fraud, by the way. Um, and, and the fraud money that, that Bain Capital and Goldman Sachs did against Mattel Toys, Finger Hut, E Toys. Uh, resulted in them having 12 million shares reportedly of Mattel toys which got them on the inside track on how to constantly uh, acquire assets for pennies on the dollar to wind up with Toys R Us you know over five billion dollars was stole from Mattel E toys KB toys finger hut uh, by Bain Capital and Goldman Sachs and their gang, M&AT law firm, Combe Connolly, the U.S. attorney, Paul Traub, the Ponzi schemer. And I'm here today in La Mesa, California with the continuing story on the 33,000 people that lost their job at Toys R Us, the iconic Toys R Us, of course, being closed nationwide, and the 2,000 employees now at Mattel that lost their job. And uh, hold on a second. I'm now driving over to the front. The reason why I had to take the picture of that uh, street sign there is apparently this Toys R Us has been closed so so long that the uh, um, the sign's now off the building at, at the Toys R Us store here. Uh, apparently, there's people in there today. I don't know what they're doing. Uh, you know, people probably looking at making another retail shop out of uh, uh, the location. Anyway, that's the sign over there, as you can see. And this is the store where there's no sign on it anymore. It's just closed doorways. The issue here is 33,000 people lost their job and they didn't have to. You know, chances are just like E Toys wasn't insolvent, KB Toys wasn't insolvent, um, uh, Toys R Us possibly wasn't insolvent. Uh, in my opinion, the reason why they turned down the one guy's offer, I forget his name, Lebrata or whatever, that offered to buy several hundred of the toy stores for $700 million and they said it wasn't enough is because he would have been entitled to the books and records of the company and that they couldn't allow. Uh, by doing this total liquidation, if you remember, Romney destroyed his Olympic records. Uh, he destroyed his governor hard drive by his people buying up the computer hard drives. The law required that they keep the paper records for 25 years, but there was nothing about the digital records. So they did everything digital and then they bought up the computer hard drives and smashed them. You know, and in our e-toys, uh, Morris Nichols Arston Tunnel, MNAT.com, was our attorney, was also the attorney in the Bain Capital case of the $100 million fraud for Bain Capital, and was also the attorney for the Learning Company merger with Mattel. All three of those cases were fraud. Learning Company merged with Mattel. Mattel, uh, obviously, it was cookbook fraud. And Mattel lost an instant $4 billion in what was classified as one of the worst corporate mergers of all time. E-Toys, they destroyed our books and records in the case, and they didn't even give me the memo about it. They did it before the court. Nobody objected because I didn't know. And uh, uh, the other thing that they did in the E-Toys case is they doubled the salary of all the employees so that when I fired them, they'd be angry at me. And again, I didn't get a copy of that memo either. I got it years later from a guy that was working the E-Toys versus Goldman Sachs uh, stock offering case. Um, uh, there's fraud all around this toy industry. We've closed several law firms. We put dozens in jail, but the big guys are still getting away. And that's why Toys R Us went down. That's why Mattel lost Toys R Us as an account and had to lay off 2,000 employees. And who knows what's going on with Hasbro. Mattel tried to merge with Hasbro or talked about merger with Hasbro and Hasbro had better sense. Um, the issue is, unless we hold them accountable for these crimes, they're going to get away with it, and the 33,000 employees aren't going to get paid. The 33,000 employees are entitled to be paid at Toys R Us 
and the 2,000 employees, the law says the WARN Act, W-A-R-N, WARN Act, says that when it's over 200 employees, they must get a 60-day notice, including benefits, right? Now, on top of that, Bain Capital, Goldman Sachs, Thomas Lee Partners, and, and Vernardo Realty, and all those other guys have to explain whether or not they benefited from fraud. If they were in on Bain Capital's fraud, Bain Capital, as we know, you're not entitled to keep the money from fraud. So Bain Capital can't be creditors in the Toys R Us case. There's bankruptcy rule 510C, little c, equitable subordination, which allows the court to expunge or put the creditor at the end that's done bad faith. And Bain Capital's done bad faith, so much so that Bain Capital gets clawed back and, of course, Mitt Romney bragging that he got hundreds of millions of dollars in profit from Bain Capital. He gets clawed back also. You know, but everybody believes Mitt Romney's still going to be president. He's running for senator, and there's a chance he'll run in 2020. So everybody thinks by doing him a favor of not prosecuting this, these cases that they may be rewarded when he gets inside the Department uh, uh, Control of the Department of Justice. It, making you understand, uh, a New Jersey U.S. attorney gave USAG John Ashcroft a $50 million no-bid deferred prosecution agreement. And if you think that the rank and file didn't pay attention to that windfall profit, you're out of your mind. You know, they got it. Romney's gotten the profit, Bain Capital's gotten the profit, Goldman Sachs got the profit, and other people have profited from the fraud in the toy industry cases, and they're not allowed to keep it. If we bring this to attention, enough people, and ask the answers, Senator Sanders, Senator Warren, Senator Cornyn, all these people that are asking questions about uh, uh, Bain Capital deliberately doing fraud, we have the answer right here. The facts are right here. They can turn around and bring these guys and get them indicted tomorrow. All they got to do is look. The, 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 it's in public docket records. It's overwhelming and profuse. The reporter Aaron Kessel was writing so much about it, they made up a phony excuse for Twitter to turn around and close his account because he was writing the stories about these cases. Please pay attention to Aaron Kessel on Steamlit and Coinvor and other places, uh, activist posts where he's posted the stories about it. He has the details deeply researched on how Bain Capital, Mitt Romney, m and Paul Traub, Combe Connolly, uh, Jay Clayton, all these guys should not be allowed to preside over these cases. They've done fraud. It's called racketeering. They need to be punished for it. They need to be held accountable for it, right? And it's about time. It's been 17 years they've been getting away with it, with the minor league players getting arrested and the minor law firms getting closed up. It's now time for m and to close up and possibly Ropes and Gray, because they've been part of it too. All we need is to unify together and demand answers. That's all we need. We're entitled to a legitimate investigation by somebody other than Jay Clayton and Combe Connolly, who's now a judge in Delaware. This guy buried the cases. So what they did was is they voted on him to become a judge by voice vote. So nobody would be recorded as who said yes and who said no. Are you kidding me? This is outrageous, right? Just as is coming, Mitt Romney. Combe Connolly, Bain Capital, Goldman Sachs, you guys deserve this finger so far up your butt for what you've done to the victims and institutional investors and so forth. It's ridiculous how much you guys have gotten away with. But justice is coming.